Um, I think at this point I am ready then to start looking for companies that I want to invest in. So let's go, if you go back to your Moodle page, da, 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 there it is. Um, under the Excel I actually gave a couple links to different places where you can find stock prices. But the first one here is kind of nice, it lists all the New York Stock Exchange, uh, all the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange in alphabetical order. Um, so you'll get this really long list of all these different companies. And you can scroll through them, you can find companies that you want to invest in, but you can also search for companies on this page. Uh, there's two ways you can, you can search for things. One would be doing a control F. If you're in Mozilla Firefox and you hit control F, you get this little find box down here. If you do a control F in Microsoft Word, uh, Excel, no, Microsoft Internet Explorer, it'll be in the top right corner. If there's a link on your Moodle page, Christian. Um, yep. Um, when I do the control F, that's a quick way to search on a page for text. So I'm going to look for Lincoln. Uh, and when I start typing it in, all right, I don't have your attention. I need some, some eyes up here. Just just leave the, uh, once you got that pulled up, just leave it there for a second. Um, you can search through all of these. They're in alphabetical order. But I wanted to show you, you know, when you do use the control F, you get this little box down here or in the upper right hand corner. And when you start typing text, it starts looking for that text. And notice how it found it for me and highlighted it. So it brought me right to what I was looking for. On this page, you'll see then everything that you need really to get started entering your money or your, your companies into your spreadsheet. Um, the first thing was the company name. I'm going to do Lincoln National. Um, the symbol there was LNC, if you remember. It's this up here. So the symbol was LNC. Um, the initial price per share was $16.46. I really want you to use this closing price. That was like the last price it was sold at uh, at the end of the day yesterday. So I'm going to use that $16.46. Wait, where are those numbers coming from? No problem. Close, $16.46. So I'm going to use that for my initial price. Oops. And I'm actually going to say, let's see, I purchased it today, right? 9, 30, 11. My initial investment, this is where I could do all of them as $1,000. Um, or I could decide to do something different. For right now, I'm just going to do 1000 And notice if I, did you see how I did that? Quickly fill them all in. Let me show that again. Um, I clicked on this little black box in the corner. When you do that and you start dragging down, uh, Excel is going to try guess what it is you're trying to enter. In this case, it, it's going to copy 1000 to each of these. So it fills it in automatically. It gets even cooler when we start using some of the formulas like we're going to do in one second here. Number of shares. If they are $16.46 a share, and I bought $1,000 worth of them, how many shares am I going to buy? A lot. How do I figure out? Mathematically, how do I figure out how many shares I'm buying? OK. Yeah, the amount of money I put in. So it equals. Anytime you're putting in a formula, you hit the button equals. And then, so I'm dividing this by this, right? So I can actually just click here and it'll fill in. So now the computer is going to try and divide whatever's in E4 divided by whatever's in D4. Can you do that again? Yeah, I'll do it one more time here. And what it spits out then is how many shares I bought. Now, 
In real life, you couldn't buy partial shares. In our project, I'm fine with you buying partial shares. Um, so anyway, again, to see how you did that, you're going to hit equals. That tells the computer that, OK, I, I need to calculate something. I need to figure something out. And what I really want to divide is this divided by this. Okay, so I'm going to do this divided by this. And it automatically fills it in for me and does the math for me. Zeb? Um, where do you find on the website the initial prices? I'm going to have you using the, uh, the close price. So what the price was at the end of the at, at close the day before. Yeah. Um, can you just explain this over Sure. Um, we've got, well, this is getting a little off topic from what that's it. The open prices um, at the beginning of the day, what was the stock selling for first thing in the morning? Yeah. Um, the, highest, the highest price that it was sold for during the day, low prices, the lowest price it sold during the day. The net change is how much it changed from open to close. So at the beginning of the day, it was selling for $16.08. At the end of the day, it was selling for $16.46. So it was a change of 0.87%. Uh, um, or sorry, that's the net change. The percent was 5.58. It went up 87 cents. Um, the volume is how many shares were traded during the day. Uh, 6 million shares that be traded. Uh, that's going to always be positive so because it's just how many times did a share of stock well, change money? How many shares were bought and how many were sold? So, like, do they add? No, it's if um, every time there was a transaction. Okay, that's so right. every time I sold one, it by negative, I meant like giving away or sold. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. That, that 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 process of selling one is a transaction, so it counts for one towards the bottom. Gotcha. Um, of course, there was somebody else on the other side who was buying it at the same time, so one transaction. 52-week um, high, this gives you an idea of the highest the price has been for the stock for the last year. 52-week uh, low, how low it's gotten. And then we're not going to worry about dividend yield. And, uh, PE is, well, we're not going to get into that. Um, but it's price to earnings, price of the share compared to the earnings. The uh, year to date change then is how much has the stock changed from the beginning of the year till now. And for Lincoln, it's down 40.8%. So it's down quite a bit. Being down isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're <coughs> buying it right now though. So that's something to keep in mind. What really matters is just where it goes from here. Um, so let's get back to our, uh, our spreadsheet. Um, the nice thing about entering it as a formula, remember we did the equals and we did this divided by this. Well, if I go and change my initial investment, I'm like, you know what, no, actually I want to invest $2,000 in Lincoln. I can change that to 2000 and it will immediately calculate how many shares I have. So that's the, that's the nice thing about using the formula where it's tied to the certain boxes. Um, so let's say I had bought, I'll go back to a thousand here, let's say I bought a whole bunch of other stocks at a variety of different prices. Um, now I need to calculate the number of shares. I don't actually have to re-enter that formula each time because again, Excel is smart. If I click on that bottom right hand corner of that box, I don't want to re-explain this so please watch this. If I click on that bottom right hand corner and then drag it, it's going to realize my pattern and copy it. It's awesome. So now it realized that for this column, or for this row, I wanted to divide this by this. And, and so on down. So, solves that in one, um, yeah, you just drag it down, you don't have to keep re-entering everything. Um, lastly, we want to make sure we, we're going to add up all of our initial investment to make sure that it added up to $10,000.
so you aren't spending too much. In order to do that, again, we're going to use a function. So you can hit equals or you can hit the um, function button. And we're really going to do a sum. We're going to add up a whole bunch of things. So there's a couple ways to do this. If I do a sum, it actually already figured out kind of what I want to do, but if I wanted to add up a certain number of numbers, I will click on this, and then I will highlight the ones that I want to add up. I do that. Oops. I got to highlight all of them. And what the computer is saying is, okay, this is going this box is going to equal the sum of all of this these things up to here. And so I'll hit OK, and I get 10,000. So it spit it out for me. That way I can make sure that I, I'm investing the proper amount. Um, and later we're going to have other things total up, namely how much your investments have added up to. Um, but that's to come a little bit later when we add a few more details of what the current prices are. And they're going to automatically refresh from other pages. And so I'm not going to get into that in a lot of detail right now. Um, the last thing I want to do, I kind of want to put a little line above this, so I'm going to go back up to my border and put a top border, and I get this li lovely little line that kind of blocks off the bottom from, from everything else there, so it just makes it look a little bit cleaner when I go to, uh, when I go to print this.